There is um, a morning Joe. And look, the reason why playing stuff like this is important at this point is because when we get to September, which is the next uh, debate, the, that's when people are going to start paying attention. I, I don't know what the numbers were uh, for the debates, but I don't think they were more than 10 million. I think it was less on both yeah. ends. And um, I don't think that more than 30 to 45% of Democrats are really keyed in no. to uh, the primary yet. And so really i mean this is the way this our our politics work i don't know if it works this way in other countries probably not in the same way because there's not the same amount of time and their the elections media, are so much shorter everywhere and, else yeah. and the media is different too yeah. um but just like there's the invisible primary with donors mm -hmm. there's another primary and that is sort of create these narratives in the media mm -hmm. and it's vastly different than it used to be because of twitter i think yeah totally yeah. right because the the they're, they're, journalists are not, they're, they're probably having the same amount of conversations with each other, but they're not just having them with each other. Yeah, yeah. And there's other people in the room and they're hearing other people. Um, and so where a big part of it gets disseminated is on cable television and particularly like in terms of like the conventional wisdom. Because the interesting thing about uh, Joe Biden's candidacy is that I don't feel like the democratic establishment is as lined up uh, behind him no. as it was again uh, by Hillary Clinton and no way, yeah. the establishment adjacent yeah. people like, you know, um, there's, there's a whole bunch of cohorts that are not with Joe Biden. Yep. And, uh, there's a sense that they don't want Bernie, but then after that, things get really murky. It seems yep. to me. Yeah. So let's just see what, um, morning Joe, um, uh, has to say about uh, the democratic race because who cares? But also <laughs> it's important. Mika, if you had just taken that democratic debate and you played that, let's say two or three years from now, my lord, you would have no idea that that democratic <laughs> debate was set right in the middle of Donald Trump's amping up of racial hostilities, attacking Elijah Cummings, the head of oversight. Calling, him a racist, attacking the city of Baltimore, attacking black leaders across the United States of America, attacking urban centers where there are a majority people of color, uh, attacking women of color who are in Congress, leading chance. And you're going after Carolina, Obama? Leading chance in North Carolina to send her back. This, again, this is straight out of a fascist playbook. And yet they're sitting there... Can we pause Quibbling? that for a second? Yes. Like it's it's this. You want to talk about how how insane uh, things feel now? The centrist conventional wisdom. This is like the Kucinich is in the wrong part of the stage thing. Right. The centrist conventional wisdom now is that why weren't the Democrats calling the president a fascist? Right. <laughs> like imagine this during the Bush years. Antifa right. Scarborough. Like, it's, I feel completely insane watching right. this. <laughs> it's it is bizarre, and also like. Why aren't they playing identity politics yes, with everything? <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> we'll continue. I mean, North this is, it's, it, 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 it is. It, we're like in a parallel we universe are. right now. North After Obama? Carolina, leading chance in North Carolina to send her back. This, again, this is straight out of a fascist playbook. And yet they're sitting there quivering over what Barack Obama did wrong, Quibbling. they need to wake Quibbling. up because they just, you know what? They just handed Joe Biden an advantage between now and the next debate. They need to wake up. And I said it before. They didn't listen. That's fine. Nobody listened when we said that Trump could win. Yeah. Everybody mocked us and ridiculed us. Says, oh, we got this in the bag. So a lot of people stayed home. So I will say oh, to Democratic oh, candidates again. Whoa, 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 whoa. I would like to check the record on that. Uh, but be that it may, also, I would also uh, like to remind these two um, that to the extent that there were people in the media who were helpful to Donald Trump, mm -hmm. like to the point of coaching him, 
Yeah, I listened to Joe when he uh, when he s- replied uh, positively to Trump saying, you're going to make me look good, right? And that hot mic. Mm. Mm-hmm. But continue. Focus on Donald Trump. Okay? Repeat after me. I will not attack Barack Obama. <laughs> I will focus on Donald Trump and the dangers his presence he brings. It's really easy. I actually tweeted it. You can read it slowly five times before you go to bed every night. I'll even do a mindfulness tape for you. We'll That's get good. like the sound of bobbling brooks in the background. Good, Joe. That's and I'll sort of whisper. Make fun of mindfulness. I will, I will whisper. Quickly. Like, focus. Your focus. Your focus is on. Be present I and see what's happening exactly. right now. That's what I'll do for you because I okay. care about you so much. But really, you're letting yourself down and you're letting the country down. So t- All right. Um, it's interesting because this is what, you know part of the reason why like the whole never Trumper phenomena I never wanted to and ever give them any type of legitimacy. Yeah. Because or validate that. I mean, I, yeah. you want to go and fight against Donald Trump? Let's super psyched. Yeah. And, uh, you know, if I can lend you some provisions, yeah. <laughs> I'll drop it off, you know, down by the rock. You yeah. pick it up and go take it. Right. Good. But um, they don't want the Democrats to have a debate. They don't want the Democrats to to uh, develop any proposals. They no. don't want a reconsideration. You know, Matt Stoller, have you been reading Matt Stoller's Twitter yeah. feed on this? Yeah. Uh, because Matt Stoller has been obviously... A longtime critic of Barack Obama's. Yeah. I mean, I had him on the show in 2012. I think we were debating, you know, Mitt Romney. Do you vote for Mitt Romney yeah. or, or Barack Obama? I don't think he was suggesting voting for Mitt Romney, but I think he was suggesting that there would be no difference. Right. And and I don't think that that I still don't think that was the case. And certainly I was critical of Barack Obama from, you know, the, the cram down on, I think, yeah. in terms of the bankruptcies. But <clears throat> it is really relevant <clears throat> to assess his um, his presidency and, and figure out <clears throat> what the Democratic Party now thinks is unacceptable, like yeah, mass yeah. deportations, right. like um, a whole host of provisions that he did, I think, uh, in policy. There's this really weird idea that um, saying... Uh, I'm like I'm critical of some things that happened during the Obama administration is going to like personally offend voters who voted who like who 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 supported him basically like they will be personally offended if you say well he shouldn't have deported so many people I don't I mean I don't think that maybe that is something that would happen but I, I don't really know there's any evidence of that. Well, they have to keep calling it an attack, and it's like no one's asking people to go milkshake Obama. <laughs> it's just like it's just saying he should have gone further in certain areas. Yeah. I mean, I guess the theory is this, that if you <clears throat> if you say that Obama wasn't good, you're going to lose, you're going to take yourself <clears throat> out of the trust circle, the circle of trust, which is the media training term. Mm-hmm. Um, and then once you're out of the circle of trust, anything you say, nobody's going to listen to. Yeah. Because you're going to think you come from a different planet. And... I don't think those people are that engaged in the debates at this moment anyways. Yeah, I don't really Um, think so. And uh, and, and, and frankly, I I also don't see how that works. Somebody's going to come out and be, I mean, maybe it's going to help Joe Biden to do that. I mean, that seems to me to be an argument that you shouldn't attack uh, Obama because it's going to help Biden. Yeah. I I, I don't know if I agree with that argument, but uh, I mean, personally, I would have liked to see them... Instead of cleaving Biden to Obama and attacking Obama and Biden that way, I mean, I think it's right to criticize the immigration things yeah. and talk about it. But um, I would have asked, what did you mean when you said that when when Trump is gone, you'll be able to deal with Mitch McConnell? Well, yeah, like, right. Like, are you saying that 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 Obama blew it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. Because that's the unspoken well, that, part of that. That the un- is the unspoken part. The unspoken part of that is is Biden hints a lot that oh, the Republicans will listen to me. Like, and you know why? <laughs> that's exactly what I would like Cory Booker or yeah. Kamala Harris in particular to ask Joe yeah. Biden. Why do you think you're better than Barack Obama? Yeah. Why? Yeah. How are you going to succeed here where where he failed? I'm I'm quite frankly, I'm shocked that none of them have brought that up in mm-hmm. the context, because that seems to me to be a line of questioning that reporters would like. Yeah. 
to go after. I don't know why nobody has. But